Hi, welcome to AI in a Nutty Shell. I'm Victor, and in this video, we're going to create an artificial intelligence that plays the Google game. So, if you like content like this, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment in the comments about which game you'd like to see the artificial intelligence playing. For those who don't know the game, it's quite simple. Your character is a dinosaur and you have to dodge obstacles by jumping or ducking. The aim of the game is to avoid as many obstacles as possible. If you use the Google Chrome browser, you can get into the game by following this link. Before we see the artificial intelligence learning how to play, I'll give you a brief explanation of how it works. This algorithm is called a neural network, and it tries to mimic how the human brain works. So, that colored figure that you're looking at is like the animal's brain. The first step is to give it some information, such as the distance it is from the next obstacle, the height of the next obstacle, and the speed of the scene. Then we take this information and take it to the neuron, which is this square, these four squares. But before it reaches the neuron, this information will be multiplied by a number, which in this case is represented by this little ball. Each little ball is a number, which can vary from minus a thousand to a thousand. This number is usually called a weight, and its function is to increase or decrease the signal. Since we're multiplying, if it's a thousand, for example, the information will be multiplied by a thousand and will grow a lot. If it's minus a thousand, it will decrease a lot. The function of the neuron is very simple. It will take this information that has already been weighed up, that is, multiplied. It will add it up and check. If it's positive, it will send this information forward. If it's negative, it will emit a zero. In other words, it will cancel it out. Then at the end, in the last neurons, if a positive number comes out, that action will be carried out. If a negative number comes out, it will turn into a zero and that action will not be carried out. In other words, if the jump neuron emits a positive signal, it jumps, the dinosaur will jump. If it emits a zero, the dinosaur won't jump. Let's look at an example of this to make it easier to understand. Imagine this situation. The dinosaur is 200 pixels away from the cactus. The cactus is 15 pixels from the edge of the screen and the speed of the scene is 8. So we'll take this information and put it in the input, the 200, the 15 and the 8, and propagate it through their respective weights. When it reaches the neuron, the neuron will add up these values and check. If it's greater than 0, it will move on. If it's less than 0, it will cancel. When it reaches the end, the action that has a value greater than zero will be executed. So note that it's these weights that will define the dinosaur's behavior. They are responsible for associating the situation the dinosaur finds itself in with the action it will take. But the problem is we don't know what the correct values are for each of these weights. They can vary from minus a thousand to a thousand. So there are lots of combinations. We can't test them one by one and see which one works best. We have to work out a strategy to find a combination of values that results in a dinosaur that's good at the game, with good attitudes, who jumps at the right time and ducks at the right time. And what is the strategy to find this set of values? It's actually quite simple. The first thing we have to do is create several dinosaurs with random values. Then we play these dinosaurs. When they all die, we see which of them got the furthest. This is probably the best of them all. Then we'll clone it. All the other dinosaurs will become an identical copy of him. They'll have exactly the same values in exactly the same positions. And the next step is to make a few small random changes so that we have a chance of coming up with an even better dinosaur. Now we play them again and repeat this as many times as necessary until the dinosaur is good. I try to reproduce the game as faithfully as possible. The speed with which the dinosaur falls, the speed of the jump. This graph shows us the distance per generation. So this blue dot is the distance of the best dinosaur of the generation. 
and the red dot is the average of all the dinosaurs in the generation. On the right, we can see the neural network of the best dinosaur that is still alive. Now the neurons are the dots and the weights are the lines. I'll leave the more technical details of the implementation in the description. After After time practicing, he reached this score. From then on, he doesn't die anymore. He's learned to react to any obstacle. At that point, I was a bit disappointed because I thought it would be harder for her to learn. But she learned very quickly. How can we make life difficult for her? So I added a thorn. This thorn comes every 5,000 pixels. And in order to jump the thorn, she'll gain a skill which is to summon a little airplane. This little plane lasts. The time it stays in the air is exactly the size of the thorn. So there's no way he can use it and still not get through. But there's one detail. This plane has a recharge time and this recharge time is 4000 pixels. In this case it's the distance when it moves 4000 pixels it recharges. Why? What was the idea behind it? What was the idea behind it? The idea was for her to learn how to hold the plane, not to use it at the wrong moment. So that she could have it at the right time. Because if she uses it at the wrong time, when it's time for the thorn, she won't have it. The plane will recharge, but she'll hold it, she won't use it, and when the thorn appears, she'll use it. That's the proof we have that she's learned to recognize the thorn. And is only using the plane when the thorn appears, which is not by chance. But to my surprise, she also managed to learn. Not so easily, but she did. And there it is, infinite again. It will never stop. In other words, we have to make it even more complicated. And the idea now is to... Let the speed increase forever. You can see that the speed stops increasing at 8. Which is more or less how the original game does it. You reach a certain speed and it stops increasing. Not now, we're going to leave that speed increasing forever. One day, it will lose. It really couldn't stay in the game forever. But one thing really surprised me. She found a case that I hadn't thought she could run. And she took advantage of it. And I'm going to show that by fighting a duel with her. Between you and me, I've been humiliated. So let's go, eh? I'm the yellow one. One, two, go. Brother! Her reaction time is infinitely longer than mine.
Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh. Game was so fast that she could jump instead of using the plane. And what's the point of jumping? She has time to react. When she's stuck in the plane, she can't press the down key and quickly descend to the ground. Whereas when she jumps, she can do that. So probably during training, some dinosaur tried to jump. Instead of using the airplane, succeeded and was better than the others. Thank <laughs> you.